Jared, uh, I'm interested in belief systems, why people believe the way they do. I'm interested in religion, I'm interested in politics, I'm interested in cultural things. But at the root of all of these things, of what our opinions are, our belief systems, why do we believe the things we believe? So I want to come to you in terms of your work uh, over your career in understanding diverse societies, because my data points are pretty limited to first world societies. So as you look over a diverse number of societies at different levels of social organization, how can you uh, help us to understand the nature of belief systems? When I look at belief systems around the world, and especially when I look at religious belief systems, I'm struck by a paradox, which is, is that an extraterrestrial would say, all of those belief systems don't make sense. How on earth can people believe that stuff? Well, the believers in, in any religion, in fact, will point to any other religion and say, how do believers in any other religion believe all that stuff? Let me take a a specific example, and this is not to be to denigrate Mormons, but the, the Book of Mormon interests me because in there is the Book of Jared, my own name. So <laughs> the Book of Mormon begins by saying that Joseph Smith went to uh, on a particular hilltop in a particular town in New York State on a particular date in the 1820s. There were these gold tablets that he translated, and the Book of Mormon begins with the testimony of 12 witnesses and six da -da -da, who said, yes, they saw the gold tablets. Real. So non-Mormons would say, how on earth can Mormons believe that stuff? But what is it that non-Mormons believe? Okay, they believe things that happened 2,000 years ago, yeah. um, which are equally incredible, you know, about going up to heaven and then da, 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 da. Every, So every religion believes stuff that's incredible. There's then the paradox. Why on earth does every religion have these non-credible belief systems? The best sense that I can make of it is that a number of people who are concerned with with understanding religion, say the, that the essence of religion includes having non-credible beliefs. You, you need know, it. I mean it. And you need it. You, you need non-credible beliefs. You need non-credible <laughs> beliefs to show that you are devoted to that religion. Uh -huh. Because if you if you said, um, I belong to your religion and I believe that the sun will rise every day and that I have two eyes, yeah. That doesn't demonstrate that you have any commitment to that religion. Right. But if you say, I belong to your religion, and I believe that the founder of my religion was conceived without impregnation and, and went up to the sky and inherited a piece of desert and will be transformed into an animal and then come back in 10 different forms. If I believe all that, you can be sure that I am really committed to, to my religion if, uh, if after living for 30, 40 years and supposedly being intelligent, I accept that stuff. <laughs> okay, but, but belief systems go beyond religion. I mean, we can look at politics, and if you can look at uh, political systems, that there are these constellations of beliefs, that if you have one belief, you sort of have to another. If you're a conservative or a liberal, there are they're the stereotypic beliefs. And, 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 and it's, you know, it's the same principle, why people believe the things that they do, which if you look at it very rationally, if you didn't know about it, you'd say, well, why do these two beliefs that, that right-wingers have or left-wingers have always have in common together? They're not they don't necessarily cohere together, but they always have it. So there's something about the nature of belief systems that goes beyond religion. I would offer a different perspective on that. And, uh, that is, yes, I accept that there are some average trends and generalities that people who are conservative in one sphere may, may tend to be conservative in another sphere. But I would say at the age of 74, one of the most profound lessons that I've learned about humans is that humans are mosaics of whom the pieces don't fit together. Mm. And you cannot predict a person's sexuality, you cannot predict their eating habits from other aspects of them. People have very different properties which stem from different life experiences. So depending upon what your mother or father did to you or what happened to you at age four, you may react in a certain way and not in other ways. I am afraid of the dog. 
I'm rational in most other ways, but I'm afraid of it. Why am I afraid of the dark? Because in the basement of the house where I grew up, there was a basement that was locked in the basement. There was a hole in the basement of the base of the basement where coal used to be stored. But I pictured from that hole with monsters coming up and they came up through the basement. And so I've always had a fear, fear of the dark. It doesn't fit with my views about sex or religion or gallbladders or other things. It's very specific, <laughs> resulting from that basement door and the hole in the basement. Mm -hmm. I would say that's a profound generalization about humans, that they are mosaics and that belief systems are not tightly interlocking. Okay. Uh, how, how does that apply across diverse societies when you look at uh, uh, so-called primitive societies or aboriginal societies versus uh, technologically developed societies? Is, is, does, does those principles hold equally? Yes, they do. Div individual societies are also mosaics with different pieces that don't fit together. I worked on the island of New Britain big island, Papua New Guinea, east of New Guinea, in 1969. And on the southern watershed of the island of New Britain, which has dozens of different tribes, there's one tribe called the Kaolong. And the Kaolong were like other New Britainers in that they were Sweden farmers with pigs. And they were distinctive in one respect, and that is that when the man died, his widow asked to be strangled by her brothers. <laughs> and she would, when her husband died, she would sing out for her brothers to come strangle him. She would sit there, and, and they were upset because they didn't like to strangle their sister. But nevertheless, she would shame them um, and say, yeah, put the rope about my neck and pull. Um, so why on earth are the, do the Kalongas, Kalong people practice widow strangling? Doesn't fit with anything else. It's a feature of their society that was shared with one neighboring society and with no other society. That's just an example of mosaic nature of human societies. The pieces do not now what together. Westerners would tend to do when they hear that story, they would say that's the result of a primitive society that shows that we're more superior. But I, I, I am sure there are examples in our society where we do similar things that, 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 that would seem outlandish to someone who didn't know our societies as well. Why would we take the most valuable fishery in the New World that was the impetus for the colonization of Eastern North America, and namely the Grand Banks cod fishery, and destroy that fishery. Personally, I think that widow strangling is less weird <laughs> than, than destroying the, the Grand Banks cod fishery, which was the basis of our economy for a century. <laughs> so what then can we say about belief systems in terms of understanding uh, the human condition? That they are unpredictable. Mm that different pieces of them are unpredictable and that they don't fit together. And if you know 70 things about a person, you may not be able, or about a society, you may not be able to predict the 71st thing.